Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this series of videos on programming a chess engine in C. I said in the last video that we'd start looking in this video, or at least I think I said in the last video, that we'd start looking in this video at setting up a board structure and printing the board to the screen. Well, I've realised that I've forgotten something rather vital in a, that we need still need to do and put into our code to make things work properly. And that is, well, first of all, I've added code file into our directory so where our files are here we've got and I've called this code file init.c init for initialization basically I've added it as you can see here to the make file line here and init c is sitting as you can see here and at the moment it has one empty function defined inside it called all init and this all init will be called in fact I'll paste it in now at the start of the main function and what we'll be put inside this all in it is basically initialization of all the things that we want to set up when our program first starts running now why have I done this well if we go back to our board structure ignore this for a moment I've just put some headers in to separate the various different things in our one header file for the project if I go back to the board structure you remember that I said that I was going to have a 64-bit integer with, for each of those integers, one bit representing a square on the board for pawns, for white pawns, black pawns, and also for both pawns together. It represents a 64-bit number where if a pawn is on a square, the bit is set to 1. When it isn't, it's 0. Now, I've tried here to make, first of all, the colors of the squares a little bit more readable. But I've set something up here with good old LibreOffice to try and explain what I need to do before we start actually filling the board structure. So here I've got 64 squares, you can see, going from A1, which is the 0, to H8, which is square 63. Of course, that's 64 squares. And you can see those as array index squares. So H1 is at index 7 in an array, let's say. Now, if we imagine also that each one of these here is a bit in a 64-bit number, so if I look at this board here on the right-hand side, at the moment they're all zero. So say we wanted to add a pawn on B2 here. And what we would say is, we know that that is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, tenth bit that needs to be set to 1, so like this, in our 64-bit number. And if we also wanted to add a pawn set D2, we would be setting the twelfth bit to 1 as well. So the 64-bit number in terms of bits would be 9 zeros, a 1, a 0, 1, and all the rest zeros would show where the white pawns are on the board in that 64-bit number. Now, if we want to set that, or indeed if we want to let's say take our 64-bit number and say we want to know which squares the white pawns are on in this case they're on b2 and d1 well later on we'll be programming in a function which actually extracts one by one the positions of each bit in a 64-bit number and the first one it would extract is here and it would return to us the index position in an array of this square b2 but because it's based on a 64 square array, so 0 to 63, it would return us the index of 9 and say that a pawn is on square 9. But as you know, our board is represented by a 120 square array, 0 to 119. And you can see here square 9 is actually up here in the top right. It's not even on the board. What we need is when this is returned in a 64 square manner, we actually need it to return the, index, the equivalent index for b2 which is here a 32. So we need some kind of array which has 64 squares and when it's fed in the normal 64 based square number, say 45 here, it actually returns us the equivalent which is the 76 here. And we also need the same in the other direction as well. So for instance when we're setting the board up and we're setting the positions of the pawns will be later on when we're, when we're doing that we'll be using the files and ranks and we'll be starting with an index from this array here on the left hand side with the border squares which will be giving us the incorrect bit to set 
on the 64 based. I hope that's clear. So basically what I'm looking to do is to put two arrays in which allow us when you say, OK, I have a 120 based index and I need the equivalent square in a 64 based index, give it to me. And I have a 64 based index, but I need the equivalent square on the 120 based. We need two arrays to be able to interchange between the two of them. I hope that makes some sort of sense. It's actually quite simple to do. I save some typing. I've already typed out the definitions. And I'm going to copy and paste them across and explain them. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to paste in in our definitions under good old globals here, which all teachers hate, but I've already explained at the start of this series, I'm trying to keep things as absolutely simple and as quick as possible. So we're going to have one long, large definition file. And with the external keyword, because they'll be accessed everywhere, I've got an array called square 120 264 with a constant of 120 squares here. So this is the one that will be given an index from 0 to 119, but it will always be from 21 to 98. We'll be putting some checks in for that later on into the program. And it will return us the equivalent index on a 64 base board. So for example, just to reiterate square B2, we would submit 32 and we would say at position 32 in that array, it would return the value 9 for us. And likewise, I've got exactly the opposite the other way around to go from the 64 base to the 120 base. I've got a square 64 to 120 array with the 64 squares here. So I'm just going to also take the definitions of these two and put them into init.c so they're actually defined and now we're going to put in a function which actually initializes and fills these values inside the array. The first thing I need before I do that is I need to put in a little macro at the top of the definitions file. Should I put it at the top? No, I'll put it here where I've put macros and this simply for a given file and a given rank so from 0 to 7 and from 0 to 7, remember, rank 1 is 0, rank 8 is 7, file A is 0, file H is 7. In our constant definitions, if you remember at the top here, as enumerated. I, need a, I want a macro so I don't have to type things out, that basically when I give the file and rank number, it returns to me the 120 array-based number for that square. And, whoops that's what this little macro here is doing. So I give in the file and rank and it simply returns the equivalent square then. So the next thing I need is I now need the initialization code function which I'm going to simply copy and paste and then talk through. And you'll be able to pause the video and copy it in yourself any uh, type it in yourself anyway. Make this just a tiny bit larger so we can see all of the function. Okay. So what's going on here? So I've got initialize square 120 to 64. So I've got some definitions here. File is file A, rank is rank 1. Just declaring some variables that I'm going to use. The first thing I'm doing is iterating through all of the squares in each array and I'm setting the value of each integer in the array to 65 because that's a value that should never be returned from the array should always be 0 to 63. So I'm setting all of them to 65 to start with. And conversely here, when going from a square 64 to 120, I'm returning also an impossible value that wouldn't even be on the board of 120 because the 120 array goes from 0 to 119. That's just for a little bit of fail-safe checking later on. And now I've got two loops here, one nested inside the other, where I basically say, starting at the first rank, increasing the rank by 1 and each and for each rank I start at file A and go up to file H and increase so going back to our board I start here and increase file by file the loop ends the rank increases and I increase file by file so it's fairly self-explanatory so I do it in this manner it's basically stepping through each of the indexes I get the square using our file rank to square macro sending in the file and rank and now I set the 64 to square 120 at the index of square 64, which I'll come in come to in a minute, gives the value of our current square. 
and square 120 to 2 square 64 at our current square is set to square 64 and square 64 is incremented. So that should all be fairly clear. The only thing that might not be clear is what square 64 is doing. Well, it's cheating a little bit. You can see I've explained from the way these two loops work here that I'm stepping through in order of the indexes in the array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Which means if I set a variable called square 64 to 0 here and increment it on each loop, it'll be representing the 64 based index array for that square. So I don't need to do any working out with the file or rank or anything like that. I just increment it by 1 each time and then use that value here. And if you remember, 64 to 120 takes in a 0 to 63 index value and returns the 0 to 119. That's why at the position of square 64 in the array, it's being set, its value that it returns is square and vice versa with this array here. OK, I'm going to stop trying to explain that now. Hopefully that's clear. If it's not, go through it a couple of times or just write it out by hand on, hand on paper. Because during the time of programming a chess engine, unfortunately, you end up with a lot of things that can end up making you scratch your head in a little bit of frustration trying to understand which index belongs in which array, etc., etc. And it's often the cause of very bad and horrible bugs. Good, so now that function's written, all we need to do is actually call this initialization function. So we'll put it into our all init so that we can guarantee, because all init is being called from main, that it'll be called. And now we need to put these two functions inside defs.h, sorry, just one of them, just the all init, inside defs.h so that main is able to find the code for it and call it. I think that's all we need to do. Now one more thing we'll do, which I think I prepared down here. Yes, I'm going to put into main, just for now, a couple of loops which will print the arrays that we've now filled to the screen just so you can see what happened. So I'll leave that for a couple of seconds here so you can pause the video and see what the code is. But it should be very self-explanatory. Note the use of the modulo operator here. And here I'm just using in the printf a width specifier to print each number within five character width so things are spaced a bit nicely. And now I'll call it the console, and hopefully if I run make, it'll compile, and of course it doesn't compile. And it says index is not declared, of course it isn't, so it index equals not. I've done this on the fly, so we might have a couple of errors here. Make again. OK, seems to have compiled, so now I can run vice. And we've got our two arrays printed. So you can see here the first array is the 120 square array and inside the 120 square array here you can see it's returning 0 to 63 when we submit an on the board square to that array and here you can see in the 64 square array when we submit a 0 to 63 it returns the equivalent square position on the 0 to 119 array. So everything looks fine and dandy there, and we're ready, hopefully in the next video, unless something else comes across my mind before I start doing it, to actually print a board, set up and print a board to the screen. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.